What's up everybody, my name is Seth, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how I go about getting a metalcore guitar tone, specifically the tone that I got in my previous videos featuring this LTD EC1000. If you're new here, or you just need a refresher about what that tone sounded like, here's some example clips from those videos. In order to get these tones, I'm going to be using my Axe FX3 as well as some third-party IRs from York Audio. Specifically, I'll be using the Mesa Oversized V2 cab pack. This is honestly a fantastic pack, and it's really inexpensive. So if you're in the market for a Mesa-style guitar cabinet impulse, you should definitely check this one out. This preset is actually pretty straightforward, and it's largely based on the type of rig that a lot of the bands that I grew up listening to were using both live and in the studio. So I'm not really trying to reinvent the wheel here so much as I am trying to pay homage to the bands that made me really inspired to pick up the guitar in the first place. Without further ado, let's head over to Axe Edit, and I could show you guys what I got going on to get these tones. The first thing I want to show you guys is what's going on in the cab block, just because in my personal opinion, this is the single most important tone shaping piece of this entire preset. Like I mentioned, we're using York Audio IRs, and specifically we're using an IR of the tried and true Mesa oversized rectifier cabinet with the Shure SM57 as our main and only microphone. This microphone, as you can see here, is placed on the cap edge, which is a pretty common mic placement metal music just because it gives you a really balanced but still very cutting guitar tone. The only change I've really made is in this preamp tab, and I've added a little bit of a high cut at 10K just to tame some of the high end fizziness you can sometimes get with 5150 style amps. And I've also put a low cut at 100 hertz just because, especially in the mix, from my understanding, you really want that low end information to be produced by your bass guitar and your kick drum. You want the guitar to be more centered in the mid range of the mix. So I've done those cuts here to help keep these guitar tones a little bit more focused. Moving on to the amp block, as you can see here, I've got the PVH6160 Plus selected. This is a model of the PV5152 or the 6505 Plus, depending on which era of PV you're looking at. And just like with the cabinet, this is a classic amplifier that's been used by tons of bands on many, many, many albums. Um, there are actually several 5150 style amps in the Axe FX, but in my experience, at least with this LTD guitar, uh, this is the one that tended to work the best for rhythm sounds just because this amp is a little bit tighter than the other 5150 models, which is obviously great for having that tight metalcore rhythm sound. And this amp also has less of a mid-range push than the other 5150 style models. So I found that the block letter 5150 works really great for lead sounds, which I'll cover later in this video. But for that tight rhythm sound that I really like in metalcore music, this one really did it for me. And even at stock settings, like I have it set here, you get a really awesome metalcore and metal guitar rhythm sound just without touching any of the knobs. Most of that is due to this awesome cab block that we've got going here, like I mentioned before. All right, so hopefully you agree that even at stock settings, that is a really awesome sounding metal core and metal in general, honestly, guitar sound. Uh, the only change that I've made from the default is that I've switched the speaker impedance curve to just match the IR that we're using. So since we were using an oversized rectifier 4x12 cabinet, I just switched the speaker impedance curve to match. Um, honestly, that IR is doing so much of the heavy lifting for the sound, like I said before, that I feel like for me personally, I'm already 75% to where I want to be tonally with a sound like this. The only other adjustments that I would make would just be on this little front panel controls section here. So for me, I'd want it to be a little bit tighter. So I dial back the gain to be about four and a half ish, usually somewhere in this region. Um, I'll dial back the mids just a little bit since if I'm using a tone like this, I'm probably going to be double tracking it. So we really don't want it to get 
too mid heavy there. So we have some space for the lead guitars. So yeah, somewhere around there will probably be fine. I like to push the treble just a little bit, not too much because like I said, the 5150 amps can get a little bit too shrill if you push them too much because they're known to be pretty fizzy, but I feel like this helps open up the amp just a little bit. And other thing that I think helps open up the amp a little bit is to pump up the presence and the depth to five. And this is pretty much exactly what I used for the rhythm sound on the other two videos that I had with the uh, LTD guitar. The only things that have changed, obviously, is since the firmware is updated, I feel like the amp sounds a little bit different, but in my personal opinion, it sounds even better now than it did then. So here's what the amp sounds like with this IR, this guitar, and these settings. <laughs> For the overdrive, as you can see, we're using the T808, which is a Tube Screamer 808 emulation in the Axe FX up front with these settings. I've experimented with having this on or off uh, when I was making the LTD videos, and what I found is I tend to prefer the way it sounds off when doing rhythm tracking with this guitar just because I feel like things sound a little bit tighter without it. I do think this block is really useful to have on when I'm playing with my other guitar since those are all loaded with passive pickups because it helps the guitar hit the front end of the amp in just the right way to give me that nice metal sound. The EMGs I feel like already have that kind of built into it so the Tube Screamer isn't needed as much and with that guitar I've actually found what the Tube Screamer does is give you a little bit more bloom on your palm mutes and it kind of makes things sound a little bit less controlled but that could be super useful if you're doing stuff like breakdowns where you really want those palm mutes to ring out more <laughs> Okay, so quick amendment to what I just said about the overdrive. Um, I completely forgot to mention how much more fun this preset gets to play whenever you turn this on, regardless of what guitar you are playing. Everything just feels so much more chewy. The sound gets so much more saturated and it just, it feels like heaven. And yes, it does sacrifice a little bit of that clinical tightness that is really useful for recording, but my God, man, I would be lying if I said I didn't turn this on and just instantly start jamming for the last 20 minutes without any consideration for the fact that I have a video to make. Moving on to the lead sound, I've actually dialed things in a little bit differently here, just so that way this lead can really stand out when being played on top of the rhythm sound that we went through before. So let's just go block by block to show you guys what's going on. Starting with the cab, we're still using IRs from that Mesa York Audio cab pack, but this time we're using the 57V on the cap edge. So this is just a vintage version of the SM57. And I also threw in a ribbon mic just to help kind of fatten up the sound a little bit. As far as the preamp goes, 
pretty much exactly the same as what we had in the rhythm patch. So low cut at 100 hertz and high cut at 10K. For the amp block, again, we have that same speaker impedance curve that we had on the rhythm amplifier. I always match the speaker impedance curve to whatever we're using, but this time we're using the block letter 5150 amp model, just because like I mentioned before, this amp is a bit more saturated than the 6505 plus or 5152, and it also has a lot more of a mid-range push than that amplifier does, which makes it really good for lead sounds. All I've done here from stock settings is I've bumped up the mids just a little bit, again, to give it a little bit more of that mid-range push so it stands out. And I've also bumped up the presence and the depth to five just because I feel like this really opens up these amplifiers. Anything below five, I feel sounds a little bit too dark. Now on the drive block, I have bumped up the level up to 10 just because I really want it to be slamming the front end of the amplifier so you get a really nice liquid, very saturated lead sound, which is really fun to play and it also makes it a lot more easy to play. For the delay, I'm just using the mono tape delay set at a quarter note. Obviously, this is something you might want to dial in depending on what song you're playing and obviously you're going to want to factor in what the tempo of that song is. but. For everything that I've done so far with this type of patch, a quarter note delay has served me just fine, and I haven't really made any other adjustments to this besides dialing the mix down to around 15%, just because for me, a delay like this is really used to just kind of fill in the space between notes in your lead and just add that little bit of subtle ambience that makes it sound more full. And finally, this reverb that's hanging out at the end of the signal chain is really mostly just a feel thing. I find that when I'm playing with headphones, I think things sound a little bit too direct, so I like to turn on a subtle reverb like this so things sound less direct. <laughs> So I personally love the way that sounds and hopefully you do too. This for me is the sound that I hear in my head whenever I think of metal or metalcore guitar tones and I'm using pretty much the cliche rig for getting those type of tones. So you would expect it to kind of really excel at that type of sound. I'm not usually a huge proponent of active pickups like I've mentioned in other videos before, but honestly, this is definitely like the first guitar and the first preset that I go for whenever I am wanting something that's a little bit heavier. And I think that's going to pretty much do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed the tones that I dialed in here. And if nothing else, I hope you can take some of the things that I did here and apply them to your own tones going forward. If you did enjoy this video and you got something out of it, please consider liking it and subscribing if you haven't already done so. That really helps me a lot. And Right now, at the time of filming, I'm about halfway to 1,000 subscribers, which is a huge milestone. So if you want to help me out and get even closer to that goal, I would really appreciate it. If you're interested, I have links to other ways that you can help support me and the channel in that description box down below. So check those out if you have a second. But even if you don't, I just want to say thank you all so much just for watching this video. That also helps so much with this video getting around to even more people. And a special thank you to everybody who is already subscribed to this channel. You guys are awesome, and I really do appreciate you. Until next time, take care, and I hope to see you again soon.